Hey, what's up, VC? It's Steve again, Harmless Rebel. It's time for another hard rock and heavy metal update. Um, I didn't even look through these. I just grabbed a stack of stuff that I've been listening to, so just kind of uh, wing it, I guess. Um, first up, this is one I found a couple weeks ago at one of my new favorite record stores here in town, a place called Waterloo. Um, they've just been... Every time I go there, they've got some really good hard rock and heavy metal. Um, they've got some really good imports. Um, in, a, in a video, in a, probably in another month or so, um, I found some some killer um, German pressings of some German bands uh, that I, I really look forward to listening to and sharing. I found some really killer Japanese presses there. Um, and I found a few of these uh, kind of one-off um, comps. Uh, this first one is Ted Nugent and the Amboy Dukes. Love this uh, Amboy Duke stuff. For those of you that aren't familiar with Amboy Dukes, uh, he's, that was uh, Nugent's initial band. It was originally called the Am just the Amboy Dukes for the first few albums, and it became Ted Nugent and the Amboy Dukes. And with each album, his name got bigger and Amboy Dukes got smaller. And uh, then you uh, finally had uh, uh, Ted Nugent go solo. Um, Honestly, it, it's always been Ted Nugent. Um, um, however, um, I love these this this era. Uh, just I mean, when you start off with the first Ted Nugent or the first Amboy Dukes and kind of build your way up, you really hear him grow um, as a musician. Um, really hear the guitar getting just better and better. Um, this one uh, was released in uh, 80, 82. Um, however, this is actually a re-release. Of another comp I don't have the original I came out in 75 or 76 it's, it's actually a pretty popular comp and I've seen a lot of people show it but it's uh, a picture of Ted Nugent's head with the, the Medusa snakes uh, for his hair um, so this is the same exact comp uh, it was just released a few a uh, few uh, years later uh, with this cover and I found this for like seven bucks in the shrink so a nice addition to the Nugent collection next up I showed this one um, and actually kind of a sad story. Um, I believe I bought this one when I, I took Billy to albums when uh, Billy Hurst when he was here in town and then when uh, when uh, uh, Ronnie and his family were here um, I took them there as well. Um, unfortunately the guy that, that started um, albums and um, the guy that was there that they both met and that was really good to our kids gave him free shirts and a free record um, he passed away about a week ago. He, he's never been in good health. Um, he smoked like a chimney. Actually, a lot of people didn't go to the original album store when he ran it, uh, when it was his store, uh, because he smoked in the store, so everything smelled like cigarettes. Um, and then, uh, I don't know what the deal was, but they moved to a new location. It was a, a, a lady that owned it. Um, I don't know if she had a relationship with him, but he was still there all the time. Uh, regardless, he passed away... A week and a half ago so um, however this was one of the, the really killer pickups I fa uh, got from his place um, again I was just mentioning German German uh, press this is original German pressing of UFO live um, this is really where you hear UFO um, becoming the band that, that we would know and love throughout the 70s you know they started off as a progressive space rocky type band for the first couple albums I don't have those albums yet. I do really want those and, and really look forward to finding those. Um, unfortunately, every time I find them, they're just beat to shit. Uh, you know, this one was mint. Um, it, it sounds amazing. Uh, definitely worth uh, picking up. Uh, just a really killer set. You still hear some of that space rock, but you hear them kind of becoming the hard rock band, the heavy metal band that we would, would come to love. Next up, um, I've had this one for quite a while. Actually, the, the, the newest release from this band is about to come out, or the newest reissue, um, and I'm looking forward to that. But uh, this is Primitive Rhythm Machine for Mortification. Um, I really like this era of Mortification. This album and the follow-on album, I've mentioned the follow-on album is, is one of my favorite, um, one of my uh, favorite Mortification albums for sure. Um, Still have the thrash with kind of the, the, the deathy vocals here. Um, uh, really killer, though. Um, Soundmass has been doing a really good job. Every one of these has sounded phenomenal. 
uh, and I highly recommend picking these up. Um, I don't know how fast they're selling out or if you could still get some of them, but it, it's really amazing to, 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 to be getting the Mortification uh, discography on the, on the LP. Next up, this is not my favorite era. Actually, it's funny. I think Scott, uh, Scott Waters just showed a 7-inch with this same album cover off of this album. Um, I pulled this out, given it a couple spins. Um, this was not in the best condition, but it's a promo copy, so I decided to keep it. I've been I've been slowly um, selling off some of my kind of what Brandon did a couple years ago, where I, I'm slowly just kind of selling off some of my older albums that are not in the best condition or sending them out as, as gifts to people. Um, but there's a couple like this one. It's a promo copy. It sounds really good, so I decided to keep it. But this is uh, growing up the hard way. Um, from Mama's Boys, um, definitely more of a 80s AOR-y, glammy type of sound here. Um, I don't like this as much as their earlier stuff, but there's still a couple of killer tracks on this album that just kind of make me want to keep it. So Mama's Boys, um, Irish, I want to say they're from Ireland. Next up. You know, his stuff just does not get enough appreciation. Um, I don't know, especially through the 80s, I don't remember anything that he released that wasn't just really fucking good. Um, this is uh, Paul Diano's Battle Zone. Of course, Paul Diano was the uh, the singer. I want to say the original singer for Iron Maiden, but he's not. He's the singer um, on the first two albums, though. And... Uh, so right after he left the band, he did Diano, uh, which is kind of an a, a really killer AOR album. I was really shocked when I heard it, because I'm not a big AOR guy, but that album is phenomenal. Um, and then he did Battle Zone, which is just straight up metal the way I like it. Um, I kind of feel like this is the direction Iron Maiden would have gone had Diano stayed in the band, which is kind of a, a mixed bag for me, because honestly, that first, I, I love Diano era Iron Maiden. It's probably my favorite. However, my favorite songs from Iron Maiden are all Bruce Dickinson era. So, um, but uh, still, really killer stuff. You can find. I think there's two Battle Zone albums. I have, or I have two of them. There may be more. There's only two that I know of, though. Um, I highly recommend picking these up. It's just really good, straight up metal. This one was 80, 87 on Shatter Records. Next up, this is one of those bands I just didn't know about, and, and I've talked about them before. Um, I'm pretty sure Scott Waters was the first one to tell me. Actually, I know he was, because when No Remorse announced that they were releasing these, he sent me a, a, an email, like or a, a text that minute saying, you have to order these now. Um, and I didn't, just because I didn't want to pay the shipping from Greece. I really wish there was a, a distributor of them here in the U.S. that got all of their albums, not months later to get the stuff that they didn't sell. Um, however, I was lucky enough through Hell's Headbangers to get all but the first album from this band. I'm kind of kicking myself for not buying that one. I didn't buy it because I didn't like it when I listened to it. But now that I've got all the rest, I wish I would have gotten that one just for the collection. Um, however... Uh, this is Double Talk from Accuser. Um, I've talked about this. These guys really should have been in the top four, or the big four of Teutonic Thrash. These guys are so good. Um, and they got better with each of these early albums. Um, this one is just a killer. Uh, it's kind of a, taking a shot. This was 80, when was this? It doesn't say when this came out. It may have been uh, late 80s, early 90s. But it's taking a kind of a shot at, uh, uh, this will say a double talk, uh, you know, about the double talk of politicians, money, flag waiver, um, revolution. Um, I mean, it, it definitely takes a shot at the United States. Um, but in the same way that, that a lot of us take a shot at the United States um, about the, the corruption and the double talk of the politicians. Um, I love the artwork here. Uh, again, you just can't go wrong with Accuser. I recommend uh, anything from them, and especially from their second album on. That's where they, that second album is where they really hit their sound. 
they weren't as raw as that first album and man they just they just kind of exploded from there uh, went ahead and pulled this one out I hadn't listened to this in a long time and I ran across this copy for cheap this is a, a music on vinyl pressing which um, I absolutely love music on vinyl um, I bought this pretty much the day it came out I was working at uh, doing freight offload I was offloading tractor trailers full of beef uh, 30 to 20 to 30 pound loads we would manually um, unload uh, back in those days that was 18 ish it was right before I went in the military um, and this played in my the cassette tape and my headphones while I was working over and over and over I had this one with me all the time and uh, not as good as their first out but there's still some really classic tracks on here but this is Evil Empire from Rage Against the Machine. Uh, you know, there were a bunch of hits on here. People of the Sun, Bulls on Parade, uh, Vietnam. Um, I like Down Rodeo. Uh, just a, a really killer album. And again, the MOV pressings just sound phenomenal. So I've slowly been picking these up as I find them. Especially, I bought all of my run across so far. But especially the ones like this, um, I had never owned this album. I had never heard this album. Um, I bought, I'll, I'll talk about that in another video. I don't think that one's here. Anyway, I love Alice Cooper. Um, I even love the early 80s Alice Cooper where he was so coked out of his mind he doesn't remember making the albums. Uh, I like that stuff too. Um, I had never heard these first couple albums from Alice Cooper. Uh, and and I, I really kind of dig them. I mean, there's kind of this psych, prog, hard, I don't know, hard rock thing going on. It's not really any of those, but it's all of those. It's, a, it's definitely kind of a cool, kind of a cool thing. Uh, again, I had never heard this album. I've played it five or six times. I'm, I'm really digging it. I'll probably play it again. Um, this is one of the, the Rocktober reissues from last year. Um, I think they've done maybe seven, six or seven of his albums now. Um, and I've picked up uh, probably four or five of them so far. And like I said, as I see them, I just grab them. Um, Frank from Channel 33 RPM just did a, a discussion on one of them saying that they didn't sound as good as the original copies. And... I've been pretty happy with them, and it may be just be because all of my early copies of Alice Cooper are just beat to shit from me playing the hell out of them and from whoever had them before me playing the hell out of them. Um, I've been pretty happy. Um, maybe I'll do... I, I do want to start a series doing side-by-side um, -side comparisons, because there's a lot of bands where I'd like to take original pressings and just compare them to some of the recent reissues, because there's them, some that I think definitely sound much better now and then but uh, the vast majority of the originals sound much better so um, just kind of a a little sharing type of video so you guys can take that and make a judgment on which pressing um, interests you the most so i was uh i don't want to say i was real late to this band um however this album was this the ep yeah this one was the ep so there this is a band that that it took me a little bit to get into. I bought all of their albums, uh, their EP and their albums that were available up through the end of 2018. And I listened to each of the albums once. And I thought they were pretty good. Um, but by about the third or fourth spin, I was loving this band. And now it is one of the most played bands of the year for me for 2019. And their 2019 album will more than likely be in my top 10 at the end of the year. Had I got these these 2018 pressings earlier in the year and had a chance to really digest them, they would have the, their their album would have been on my 2018 best of list. I just got them so late in the year, and, and I just didn't really give them uh, have the time to give them a chance. But this is the Luminous Eyes EP from Haunt, uh, really killer. Like I said, I believe they've got two EPs and two LPs now. And all of it's phenomenal. Actually, their their EP that came out this year is my favorite of all their releases. And it's it's songs that were remaining from the 2007 LP that they just didn't feel like fit. Uh, and I think they're better than anything on the 2007 LP. Uh, regardless, 
this was this was their uh, initial EP, if I remember correctly. Uh, regardless, you can get all of these on Shadow Kingdom. They're not super expensive. All of their stuff is under twenty bucks, and I highly recommend picking up all of it. Um, next up, Tigers of Pan Tank Spellbound. Uh, this is an upgrade copy. Um, I just ran across this, and uh, I love these first few Tigers of Pan Tank albums. Um, Spellbound is just killer. Um, Gangland, Hellbound, uh, Minotaur. Um, just such a great, great album. Uh, I'm a, you know, I, I love New Wave of British Heavy Metal anyway. And it seems like the older I get, the more I go back to that sound. Uh, it's funny, you know, in the 90s when I was, I don't want to say it was at my peak in metal, but uh, the 90s was where I was playing in metal bands. And when I was playing, I wanted more extreme and more extreme. I was getting into black metal, death metal, just just black and hardcore thrash, you know. Um and while I still like revisiting that stuff from time to time, stuff like this back then would have bored me. Now, as I get older, you know, I really see how great that early stuff was, and, and like that had probably why I like bands like Haunt, the new wave of traditional metal bands. Just the older I get, the, the more I'm, I'm going back to this this earlier sound, this this more straight up metal sound. Uh, regardless, uh, any of the first. Uh, Definitely the first two Tigers of Pantang albums uh, are worth grabbing. Next up, pulled this out, gave it a couple of spins. Um, this is the original EP from Greta Van Fleet. Um, so I've seen a lot of people say that this, uh, this was already released. However, it was released. Uh, it had a, a yellow cover. I should have brought it out so I could show it. But a lot of people said that this is just a reissue of that. It's actually not. So the original EP that came out on vinyl, which came out after the C... Actually, I have the CD here. So this CDK, this was the first release from Greta Van Fleet, the EP, with uh, eight songs on it. They took four songs from this and made that initial EP for like 11 bucks, the one with the yellow cover. Uh, then their, their newest album came out. Then for Record Store Day, they released this. And they were cheap. I think I paid 16 bucks for this. I love this album. Um, a lot of people, you know, get so hung up on the, the Led Zeppelin thing. If you completely separate that, it's a really solid album. It, it's a really fun album. Um, it's a bunch of young kids trying to find their own sound. On their newest album, you know, you start to hear a little bit more. We'll see what happens in the future. You know, there's so many bands. You know, uh, Diamond Head is one of my favorite bands. Diamond Head was hugely influenced by Led Zeppelin. On their second album, there's so much Led Zeppelin in that album. Um, you know, I, especially in early albums, a lot of these guys are going to wear their the, the, wear their influences on their sleeves. New Wave of British Heavy Metal is a great example. Um, Iron Maiden, the early Iron Maiden, there's so much Judas Priest in there um, that people don't... Nobody says that, that Iron Maiden ripped that off from Judas Priest. That was just a, a major influence. I, it's the same thing with all of these. I don't think these guys are... Yes, they do sound a bit like Zeppelin, and, you know. Let's be honest, they don't, though. He does have some of the highs and the vocals. I think he sounds more like Shannon Hoon, uh, personally. Uh, the guitar player is good. Nothing, the drums, nothing like Led Zeppelin. Uh, these are just a bunch of kids having fun and writing good music. And when you take it that way, I think it's really good hard rock. Next up, speaking of, uh, I was speaking of the imports and uh, finding some really nice imports at Waterloo Records. Um, this is one of those. I had uh, just sold off my original pressing of this because it was, uh, the corners were pretty damaged. It just wasn't in the condition I wanted. Um, and I was lucky enough to find this beautiful, is it German or UK? Yep, German. This beautiful German pressing on Vertigo in mint condition. Mob Rules, Black Sabbath. And I want to say I found it for like 20, 25 bucks. So it wasn't crazy expensive. And that's one thing I like about uh, this place. Um, a, lot of pl a lot of places I would see this for 35, 40 bucks. 
and to find it for 25 and it may have been cheaper than that it may have been 20 i don't remember but i remember being shocked by the price and i couldn't buy this one fast enough love this album sign of the southern cross is one of my all-time favorite songs um just a, a killer album Let's see, this has already gone longer than I wanted it to. Only got a few more to show. Next up, this one's a bootleg. This one gets no love. I actually like this album quite a bit, with the exception of the first. I And even the first track is okay. Um, I just don't think it's great. Um, I do like the rest of the album, though. It's a, it's a really good album. Really good riffs. I love the Martin era of Black Sabbath. But uh, this is forbidden. This is one of the bootlegs. Original pressings. I think it was only pressed in Brazil. If I remember correctly, I could be wrong on that. But I know it was only pressed in one country. The prices are astronomical. I've seen them in shitty condition for $150. Um, and take, situations like this, I'll take the bootleg any day. I spent like $25 on it. I don't remember what color vinyl it's on. Maybe white vinyl. I don't really care. Uh, really glad to have this in the collection, though. I, I You know... Um, it's Black Sabbath. Next up, Blood Rock Live. This is another one I would love to find an upgraded copy of, but the vinyl is in mint condition, and and because this is a matte finished LP, um. I never see them in this good a condition, let alone in mint condition. So, and I picked it up for less than ten bucks. This is Blood Rock live at the Chicago Amphitheater. I love Blood Rock, especially the first three albums, and uh, you just can't go wrong. Uh, DOA is is just one of the great early hard rock, uh, heavy metal songs, and uh, definitely one you should have in your collection if you're into that '70s hard and heavy sound. Last but not least, an album I was super, super excited to get on vinyl. This has my favorite song from the band. I love this era of Motorhead. A lot of people don't like it. Um, I like that Lemmy was singing. Uh, you know, I don't want to say he was singing like what we're hearing in the background. Um, speaking of which, uh, uh, this is Sacred Warrior Obsessions, the recent reissue from Retroactive. Lemmy's no Ray Para, you know. Para, Para. I can never remember the right way to say his name. Um, however, I like when when he just kind of puts that little vocal accent on, on his lyrics, which he does, and he did through the 90s. Um, I really liked that sound. This, I was super excited to have this because it has my all-time favorite Motorhead song on it. Um which is Joy of Labor. I've always, from the first time I heard that song, I absolutely loved it. Every time it comes on, I play that song over and over again. Um, this was a recent reissue uh, late last year um, from BMG. Um, I bought a package of either four or five Lemmy re or, uh, Motorhead reissues for like $100. They were like 130, but the website was having a 10% off sale. Plus, I had a $10 discount code or something like that. So I got it for right at $100 bucks shipped. Super excited. Um, I got it, and I saw the artwork is not as good as the earlier reissues. Um, the earlier reissues from a few years ago of Motorhead all sound phenomenal, all look phenomenal. I'm disappointed with the sound. This is the only one I've listened to of the five albums that I got. So uh, this is the one I was most excited about, too. So... Um, it's just not they, it doesn't sound like they remastered it uh, it sounds like they just took it from a cassette tape and put it and I'm exaggerating it's not that bad um, it just it, it's kind of kind of a muted sound that, that kind of disappointed me especially for one of the motorhead albums that I was was most excited about getting on vinyl um, if you haven't checked out the song joy for labor check it out again I it's my favorite uh, motorhead song um, I'm glad to have it on vinyl, but also not. Um, I believe this was released to vinyl initially, so I may just have to ass up and buy an original pressing. But uh, that's it, VC. Take care, and I'll see you soon.